Dear pen pals, today we're talking about a sensitive topic. If you are under the age of 18, you may want to get your parents' consent before continuing. It's okay. I'll wait. All right. In this video, we're getting down and dirty to talk about flex. More specifically, I'm going to show you in graphic detail how to practice safe flex. If you have no clue what a flex nib is and how it differs from a standard fountain pen nib, check out the stub versus flex nib video to get caught up. Flex nibs are a specialty niche within a niche of fountain pens. When searching for a flex nib, there aren't many options and the really good ones tend to be rather expensive. So when someone asks, what's a good starter flex nib? It's a question that has a highly nuanced answer. To help clarify, let's look at the various flex nib options from the least expensive to the most expensive. At under $50, you have pens like the Monteverde Monza Flex, the Noodler's Ahab or Conrad models, and the Fountain Pen Revolution Flex Nib. At this price level, the nibs are made of steel and are harder to press, giving a stingy amount of line variation and often needing tinkering to maintain consistent ink flow. As a kicker, the Noodlers and FPR pens are made from materials that tend to have an unpleasant odor. So why do people go for these pens? They are the least expensive options that actually provide a somewhat flexible writing experience. If you can spend between $150 and $250 on a flex nib, then you have access to such pens as the popular Pilot Falcon, Pilot Custom 912 FA, or Desiderata fountain pen with a Zebra G nib installed. The Falcon and the Custom 912 have a 14 karat gold nib, which seems to be the ideal amount of gold content to be soft yet springy. The Zebra G nib is a nib that is known for its wicked flexibility. Pierre Miller from Desiderata Pens handcrafts ebonite feeds for his custom pens to utilize the Zebra G nib. The result is a flex nib that provides an insane amount of line variation. However, I should mention that the Zebra G nibs will corrode over time and need to be replaced over weeks or months of use. At the luxury level, two Italian pen manufacturers champion the flex nib. Aurora's 14 karat gold flex nib and ebonite feed can be found on the Optima and 88 piston fill models. The Scribo Feel the Flex 14 karat gold nib is also piston filling with an ebonite feeder system. Now, although we don't sell vintage pens, I would be remiss not to mention that a vintage flex nib may provide you with the most satisfying flex experience for the money. However, they are a bit trickier to find. You could opt to work through a vintage pen dealer or reputable collector, but the prices will likely be highest. You might find a great deal searching on eBay or using various pen buy and sell forums on Reddit, Instagram, or Fountain Pen Network. The risk is that you're at the mercy of the individual seller, who may or may not have faithfully represented the pen. The last option would be to get the nib customized by a professional nib meister. Skilled hands can take a highly adaptable number no. 6 size Yovo nib and modify it for flexibility. This option is also quite costly, considering a 14 karat gold nib can cost over $100 without the custom grind charge. The best course of action depends on two factors. Number one, budget. How much are you willing to invest in this writing experience? Number two, flexibility. How much flex are you looking for? A little bounce or a full on wet noodle? If you're a fountain pen enthusiast that generally prefers inexpensive pens under $50, then I would suggest saving up for the mid-level Pilot Falcon or Custom 912 for your first flex nib. The experience is far more reliable and enjoyable than tinkering with the entry-level steel nibs. To see a direct comparison of various flex nibs in action, check out our Writer Showcase Flex Nib Showdown that features a variety of pens we mentioned here. So, you've got your new flex nib fountain pen and are looking to get started writing like a boss calligrapher. Cool your jets, hotshot. We'll get there. First, let's talk about inking the pen. Here's a step-by-step -step process, assuming that you've started off with a brand new, uninked flex nib fountain pen. Number one, clean out the pen. Ink flow is of utmost importance to a flex nib fountain pen. Flexing demands a higher flow of ink. Ensure optimal ink flow by making sure the nib and feed are clear of any residual manufacturing oils, 
or ink from testing. Rinse the pen nib and feed with cool running water and dry off with a paper towel or let air dry. Number two, choose your ink wisely. A well-behaved fountain pen ink with a moderate or wet flow is ideal to keep up with the flex writing. Examples would be Waterman, Tasha, Sailor, J. Urban, and Robert Auster. For that reason, I would caution against using any super saturated, sheeny, or shimmery inks when filling your flex pen for the first time. Highly saturated inks tend to write a bit drier and may lead to skipping or railroading in a flex pen. Number three, fill it up. Fill your flex pen to the fullest. You'll be using a lot more ink than with a standard writing nib. If you are using a cartridge converter filling pen, opt to use the converter. Number four, ink the friendly paper. Select a fountain pen friendly paper to use with your flex nib fountain pen. When flexing the tines, ink is flowing at a higher rate that will cause feathering and bleed through on cheap recycled paper. Clairefontaine, Rhodia, and Tomoe River are examples of paper that will hold up to the liberal amounts of fountain pen ink. Number five, angle and pace are key. Hold the nib at an angle approximately 45 degrees from the surface of the paper. Use this as a starting point to find the optimal angle to write with the pen while flexing the nib. If the pen is angled too high, the nib won't flex much, too low and you'll hazard hitting the feet on the paper while you write. Start off slowly and make gentle strokes of the nib on paper. Pretend like you're petting a cat with the nib. Number six, pressure only on the downstroke. Keep in mind that pressure should only be applied to the nib as it is being pulled on the downstroke. The tines should spread apart evenly, so make sure not to roll your hand as you flex. Number seven, start off simple. Before scribbling out your favorite quotes and flourished signatures, practice basic movements that are commonly found in letter forms. Loops, humps, swirls, and the like. This will help get a feel for how responsive the nib is, how much it can be flexed, and whether there is an issue with ink starvation. Number eight, practicing safe flex. I advise against pushing the flex too far. Although a flex nib fountain pen is designed for such strenuous activity, there is still a point of no return where a nib can bend permanently out of shape. To practice flex nib writing, try copying your favorite quotes, passages from books, or writing a pangram like the quick brown fox. Railroading, or ink starvation, occurs when a flex nib does not lay down the full stroke of ink when flexed. Instead, it only traces the outline of it, like railroad tracks. Don't feel defeated if you hit an issue with railroading. This can be remedied with a few simple troubleshooting tips. First, prime the feed. If the nib is being a bit stingy after non-use for a few days, it may need to be primed to get flowing again. If you're writing with a cartridge converter fountain pen, advance the converter piston to force more ink into the feed. Dipping the nib in a small cup of distilled water may also help get things flowing again. Next, slow down. Even the best feeds have their limitations to how quickly they can channel the ink. Slow down on the flex downstroke. Then, ease up on the flex. Ink starvation might be a nib's way of telling you that it's not meant to be pressed that far. And last, change the ink. Some inks just don't pair well with certain pens. Before giving up on the pen, change the ink as a variable and see if it is still having ink flow problems with a different color. Like I mentioned previously, pick one that has a wet flow. Be sure to rinse the pen out completely while changing inks. We hope that you enjoyed this primer on how to write with a flex nib fountain pen. If you have any questions or suggestions on flex nib writing, please put them in the comments below. Found this video helpful? Give us a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the Gold Spot Pens channel for more helpful how-to writing videos, pen reviews, unboxings, and interviews. Thank you for watching. Stay inky, my friends. Take care.